Python 3.13 has introduced a lot of features intended for the advanced audience, such as uh, free threading mode and the JIT compiler. But there is one feature in particular that it's implemented that even the most basic user could appreciate, and that is the new REPL. For those that aren't familiar with the term, it's essentially the interactive shell. It's what you get if you type Python into your console. And it has remained very basic and sometimes unintuitive for a very long time. However, with the Python 3.13 release, a new REPL has been created that aims to fix some of these problems that people have and also make improvements that will increase the overall user experience of the REPL. So in this video, we're going to find out what those improvements and features are. Of course, if you find this video helpful at any point, then consider leaving a like, tell know, and maybe subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. But with all that out of the way, let's take a look at the new REPL. So as you can see, I have two terminal shells open side by side. The one on the left is set up to use Python 3.12, which uses the old REPL. The one on the right is set up to use Python 3.13, release Canada 1, uh, which uses the new REPL. So if I want to use the Py command here, we would see that we're just on the old REPL. If I use the Py command here, we would see quite clearly that we're on a new one because the first thing, there are colorized prompts now. So these use the same colors as the new error messages. I did a video on colored error messages a little while ago for those that want to have a look at that. Uh, but the, uh, the colors are the same in the prompt. And I found out actually recently that the colors were selected because purple and red, or the purple and red selected, uh, have the same contrast on light and dark backgrounds. So that's why the colors are what they are. So, hey, there you go. Uh, but there are a few other uh, cool little things. Uh, the big one, I guess really all, well, I suppose the second big one. There's a big one and then there's a second big one. And I'll go to, the, I'll, I'll use the second big one first. Um, if you were to type exit in the old prompt, which it would tell us to use the exit function or control D, which we could then do. If we use exit here, it works. It knows what you want to do. It knows to exit. And that is something that people in Python have found really, really annoying <laughs> with the old REPL. So that's been fixed completely. The next thing to look at, if I go back in, um, actually, I want to show this off first. So clear does not work in a, in here, but clear does work. In, in the 3.13 REPL, so you can now clear your terminal if it's too busy. And now I need to exit them and uh, clear the shell <laughs> and go back in because uh, the big thing that's changed is multi-line editing. So if I were to say create a class called test and then, whoopsie daisies, and then I would create an init self with an X and then I did uh, self.x equals Y and then, oh no, I hit enter and I've messed it up. And if we obviously try and create this and it will say that there was something missing. If you try and go and edit that, hit one. Okay. And oh, right. We're now on that line. And then you have to, so you have to like, it, it's one line at a time. And that's really annoying, especially if it's a much bigger class. And this has put me off using the REPL to do this stuff multiple times. And this REPL doesn't matter. So if we made exactly the same mistake again, and you'll note how it actually auto indents now, which is another really nice thing. Uh, and you'll note how it doesn't force you to use eight characters on the second indent and four characters. It doesn't do this anymore. You can have it like this, which is nice. So if you did this and oh no, I made this mistake and now everything's broken. I could just go up one and then up two and it brings the whole class back. And now I can just change that. And now uh, if I were to make this again, uh, it still doesn't work. Oh yeah, because I need to pass a positional argument. Oh, that did, well, whatever. <laughs> you had to believe me that it didn't work before. Um, but now it works like that. The other big change is if I clear all this out. Uh, ooh, I've, oh, I've really messed up. What have I done there? Uh, oh no. <laughs> I know how to use my own terminal. Shut up. Uh, <laughs> So the other thing, as I was saying, I wanted to talk about was the new uh, modes. Well, some of these are new modes and some of them aren't. Uh, some of them are just new keybinds. So if you go into this terminal and we try and press F1, nothing happens. It just breaks. Um, well, it doesn't break. It just complains. I don't know if you can hear that. Um, but I might turn actually the system sounds on so you, so you can hear that. There you go. Uh, if you were to do the same in here, 
we would enter the help mode. Now you can do this using help, and we can't do it like that. You can do it like this. You can do it like this in the new REPL as well, which is nice. But you can enter help mode straight away, which I didn't actually know existed until I looked into this, uh, but it's actually really cool. Uh, so you can look up things like the, the date time module and it'll just give you the help on the date time module. You can get a list of, uh, of modules like that. So we can see we have all these modules on the system. We can get help on specific operators. So if you wanted help on the equals operator, then we uh, couldn't. Oh, it's plus. Okay. Okay. We can't get help on the equals. I'm sure it's the one operator you can't use. Uh, but you get help on uh, all this stuff. And then you can uh, use exit here as well to exit. And then you can exit here. Oh, no, you can't. You have to use the command. No, you can't use that command. No, you have to use Q. <laughs> It's just a lot easier to use the new one. The next mode is history mode. So I don't know if you can get a history mode on the old REPL. Pressing F2, again, there's nothing on the old one. Pressing F2 here brings you to this mode. And this is this starts from the very start of the history file. So this is all stuff that I was doing a long, long, long time ago. Probably right when I got this Mac, actually. You can see that we have the whole history here. And then we can get help to see how we can use it which is very complicated, so I'm just going to run away. <laughs> and then we can quit out of that. And then you'll see that's one of the bugs. So we now have two terminal prompts. Uh, this is something that happens. It's still a release candidate version. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself talking about it now. Uh, but um, yeah, that's one of the bugs that I found. There is another one, but we'll talk about that later. And the third mode is a paste mode. It just says in the docs, makes pasting larger blocks of code easier. Um, but I don't really understand how. So if we were to, let me just try and find something to paste in. I'm gonna try pasting this file and see how this works. So if we were to do this in the, uh, the ordinary prompt, then it would do an awful lot of stuff. It would read everything one line at a time, which is not necessarily ideal. If we did it here without paste mode, it would actually, you can see, paste it all in, but it hasn't run any of it yet. Um, so now we can execute this and it will still give us a load of errors because it, we need to import a load of stuff, but it's done it in a different way. Now paste mode, as far as I can tell, does exactly the same thing. I'm not sure if there's anything different we need to do. I have no idea. Maybe if you paste something and then instead of erroring or instead of pressing enter, you can paste again and you can paste again. Oh, that, that's probably it. So you can like chain paste and then we can get all, <laughs> all these beautiful errors in these beautiful colors. Uh, I, okay. I guess that's what it's for then. So if you wanted to paste multiple things at a time, well, the pasting is better anyway to begin with. But if you wanted to paste multiple blocks of text one after another, then you can do so using the paste mode without having to press enter um, to execute everything first. As far as I'm aware, that's all the main features. Uh, we've already seen one bug where if you go into the, uh, the help mode and you quit, you get two prompts or any mode. But also, if you go into the help mode and then go into the help mode in help mode, and then go into help mode in help mode, you click exit, and you come all the way back out. If you were to use F1 and do that, say, one, two, three, four, five times, if I were to exit, we are now in help mode. And we can confirm that because, oops, we can do this and we can get, okay, so you exit and we're in help mode again. And, and again, and again, and there we go. So then if you mash F1, you have to exit each individual <laughs> help mode. They kind of nest inside each other. Um, there is a PR open to fix that bug and they are aware of the other bug already because I did look. So they are aware of all these things. Again, it's a release candidate version. These bugs should be fixed by the time the final version goes out in October, um, but I'm doing a video in August, sorry. <laughs> so we get these bugs. Let me know in the comments what your favorite feature of the new REPL is. 
Mine is definitely the multi-line editing. That's going to be such an improvement going forward. I cannot wait to be able to use that. If you want to know more about 3.13 and what's coming within it, then I've done a whole series of videos over the course of the last year. So you can look at that in the end cards. I'll also leave some, some documentation about this in the description below. I'll see you next time for whatever we do next.